here today and you want to see health in your, in your spiritual walk with Christ. Maybe you're here today and, and you want some health and growth in your marriage. Or maybe you just want uh, to connect more in healthy ways with your children and your spouse. Then it's going to start with a choice. You have to choose. A choosing to forget. Or maybe here's a better way to say it. A choosing to lay that down at the feet of Jesus. Laying it down at the cross. Not to pick it up again. Too many times we, we drag all this stuff to the cross and we say, Jesus, look at this. Can you do something? And he says, yes. And we go, thank you. And then we drag it back with us. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Why don't we leave it there? We struggle with that. You see, if we're going to be who Christ has called us to be, we've got to be able to let that go. Well, that doesn't mean just be willy-nilly and, and, and not using common sense and pretending like it never happened. There's things you learn in the midst of it. That's called wisdom. That's maturing. That's part of growing. But you can't grow and you can't mature until you let go. Let God be God. Do your part. Quit trying to be God. Quit trying to manage your pain. Quit trying to manage your chaos. Ask the Lord to give you the freedom from it. And you will see him work in a mighty way. See, it's going to start with the choice. For when we choose to do that, God can, he can pick up those pieces and he can start to bring healing into your life. He can start to bring wholeness into your life. You'll start to experience him in new ways. Even in the midst of remembering that a pain happened to you, but you today are choosing to let it go. You're choosing to forget. Because when you do that, that which was bad becomes good. That which was unhealthy becomes healthy and vibrant. That which was dead becomes life. That which was pain becomes healed. That, that which brought sorrow can now experience joy and joy to the fullest because of the filling of his Holy Spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? Are you catching this? Because it's, it's important. And here's the trick. I'm going to say whatever needs to be said today. And we're dragging this to the cross this morning, okay? When you leave today, are you going to drag it back with you? Or are you going to leave it here? I just want to say that because it's okay to come hear a preacher, and you can get excited, and you can, you can swing from one of these lights if you'd like, and we can all do that, but uh, not really. <laughs> but if you leave and do nothing, you don't apply what the Word of God is saying, it does nothing. You haven't changed. Well, do I have to be totally transformed and a whole different person? No, be who you are. God loves you the way you are. He just wants to work in and through. So how do we forget? How do we, how do, we do this in and I'm going to share it quickly. Number one, we've got to learn this. The key to forgetting is remembering what's most important. Remember what's most important. The prodigal son, he was in a sticky situation. Think about it. He went to his father and he said, Dad, give me all the money that you owe me. You owe me. I deserve it. I want it now. It's mine. It's basically what he's saying. He forgot what was most important. He forgot that God is God and he is not, so to speak. He forgot that all that he has, he has because of the Father. Have you ever, have you, has the Lord ever revealed that to you? You ever get this toot going on and, hey, well, I'm going to do this and I'll take my stuff and I'll just go. And hey, You know what? The breath you breathe and the life you have, you only have because God gave it to you. So when you walk away with all your attitude and everything else, know that he's the one that gave it to you. You can't walk away saying, well, I'm going to go do my thing, as if you're walking away from God because you created all this. We forget that all we have, we have because God gave it to us. And it's an understanding and respecting and honoring that, an understanding that God is God. Now, here's the prodigal standing before the Father, declaring and demanding, Dad, give me what you owe me. I deserve it. And by the way, if you ever demand that God gives you what you deserve, be very careful. Because if he gives you what you deserve, you're not going to like it. I can guarantee it. Because none of us deserve grace. None of us deserve mercy. None of us deserve to be forgiven. None of us deserve any rainbows, fluffy bunnies, or unicorns, okay? None of us deserve that. But because of God's grace, he says, I give. I give. And we still keep saying, keep it coming. You owe me. What an improper attitude to have with Father God. We got, we've got to come, come before him with our, our hearts altered. Here, I'm chasing a rabbit there. Uh, imagine the gall it took for a son to come before the Father and say that. You know, I want it now. I don't want to wait for you to die. Show me the money, basically. And it was very disrespecting. And here's the crazy thing the Father gave it. Did you see? I, I, we read past that, and my, my brain just kind of slammed on the brakes. You disrespected the Father, and the Father said, sure, here you go. 
and gave it anyway. That blew my mind. What the prodigal son was doing was saying, give me. He was taking all that the father gave, converting it to cash so he could go out and party it up. And it says in the scripture that he squandered all that he had. I love that word. It's just a fun word. I was studying this in my office. I was walking around just going, squander, squander, squander. It's a fun word to say. Squander means give it, foolishly spending and blowing it all and just not using wisdom at all. You squander that which you have. He squandered all that the Father gave him. You ever squander anything? Maybe some time that God has given you. Maybe a relationship. Maybe you squandered some money. He squandered it. Fun word, isn't it? Squander. I remember growing up thinking it's all about me. What mattered most was attention. What mattered most was about having fun. What mattered most was about having a good time. You know, I, when I had money, which wasn't very often, but when I did have money, guess what else I had? A lot of friends. You ever notice that? When I had a lot of money, which a lot of money to me could have been 25 bucks and at that time in my life, I had a lot of friends. Why? Because my friends wanted to see what they could get out of me. They befriended me not because of me. They befriended me because of the money. And I didn't care at that point because I wanted so much love and acceptance and attention. I didn't care. And I squandered that area of my life. I squandered the money that I have. And so what I, in essence, did was I compromised in my life in order to take some.